angels are some of the most exciting creatures that God has made. They were made to live in heaven with him and help in the execution of leadership of all his creations. Though some of the angels decided to go rogue on God, most of them still remain true to their calling as angels of God. There are many stories about the functions, duties, and characteristic of angels that we have in different texts around the world. In this video, I shall be talking about this angel, Ariel, whose name means altar, or lion of God, in Hebrew. His name is known as Ariel, Ariel, and Ariel. He is known as the angel of nature. The name Ariel was discovered in a copy of the Sincellus portions of the Book of Enoch by Harris Fletcher in the year 1930. According to Fletcher, John Milton was aware of the text and may have drawn inspiration from it when using the name of a minor angel in Paradise Lost. Nevertheless, the existence of the name in the Sincellus fragments in 1938 has not been confirmed and, after examining, for instance, the Dead Sea Scrolls, it is now known that earlier iterations of the Book of Enoch did not include the name, Ariel. However, the idea of Ariel as the angel of nature can be traced back to Gnostic Gospel era and the Kabbalah, which is the ancient Jewish tradition of mystical or occult interpretations of the Bible. In Kabbalistic, apocryphal, and occult writings, the angel Ariel is often confused with Uriel from the Book of Enoch. Some apocryphal texts like the Pistis Sophia, which is a Gnostic text, says that angel Ariel is responsible for the punishment of the wicked and all forms of evil doings. This is the work of Beelzebub the Prince of Hell in some other texts. It is interesting to note that though the name Ariel as an angel is not in Bible, however, the name Ariel was used in four different situations in the Bible. The first instance is in the Old Testament passage of 2 Samuel 23 verse 20 which states that, And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two Ariels of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. If you take a close look at what the Bible is saying in this scripture, you will notice that it says clearly the number of Ariels Benaiah struck was two. It does not tell what or who an Ariel is. Whether the Ariels are angels, a human beings or animals is not explained in this scripture. Now let us consider the same story from another passage of the Bible, which is 1 Chronicles 11 verse 33. Here it says, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab, also he went down and slew a lion in a pit in a snowy day. The book of First Chronicles clearly states that the Ariels Benaiah killed were men that looked like lions. It refers to the two Ariels as lion-like men. So, we have more explanation of who or what an Ariel is, but is not enough information to state with certainty who Ariel is from this scripture. You must remember that Angel has the ability to transform into a human, or even an animal at will, so calling the Ariel as men does not strike out the issue of the type of being that they were. However, the only solace we have is that the Ariels could not have been angels, is that fact that angels are immortals and could not be easily killed by a human. It is interesting to note that some Bible translations treat the name Ariel as a proper name, labeling Benaiah's victims as two sons of Ariel while other translations treat Ariel here as a common noun, as if to say, Benaiah struck down two champions of Moab, as it is stated in the New Living Translations of the Bible, while some other translations call the Ariels as Moab's two mightiest warriors. Now, let us move to see what other texts have to say about the angel Ariel. First, the Apocrypha. The Jewish and Christian mysticism frequently features the angel Ariel with the translation of the name as phrase that literally means Lion of God. The name Ariel was used in Isaiah 29 verses 1 to 2, English Standard Version of Hebrew Bible where it says, Ah, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David encamped, add year to year, let the feasts run their round, yet I will distress Ariel and there shall be moaning and lamentation. And she shall be to me like an Ariel, 
Ariel here is not a being, but a city, probably Jerusalem, or where the altar of God is located. While Isaiah 29 verse 7, English Standard Version has this to say, And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, all that fight against her and her stronghold and distress her, shall be like a dream, a vision of the night. Ariel is also sometimes linked to the more well-known Judeo-Christian archangel Uriel. It was said that when Ezra returned to Jerusalem, he summoned a group of trusted Levites to minister in the temple. The name one of the Levites was Ariel. Ezra 8 verse 16 states, So I summoned Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, Almathan, Jerob, Almathan, Nathan, Zechariah and Meshullam, who were leaders, and Joyerib and Almathan, who were men of learning. Another time the name Ariel was used in the Bible is in Ezekiel 43 verses 16 to 16, which says, Above that, the altar hearth is four cubits high, and four horns project upward from the hearth. The altar hearth is square, twelve cubits long and twelve cubits wide. This altar hearth is where burnt offerings were made, a place associated with the secret of Israel's lion-like strength. Angel Ariel is not considered as a fallen angel in many texts, but as one of the angels that still remain loyal to God after the other rebel angels staged a coup in heaven. Now, according to some texts by St. Thomas Aquinas and other medieval writers, the angels in heaven were divided into different groups where some of the groups like the seraphim and the cherubim are called choirs. However, Angel Ariel belongs to the group of angels known as the Virtues, and he is said to be the leader of this group. The Virtues are angels that are said to inspire and encourage humans on the earth to produce magnificent works of art and groundbreaking scientific research. They also help bring the miracles of God into the life of the humans. A medieval theologian, Pseudo Dionysius says that virtues have the following characters. They are archangels that can be male or female, hence the reason Angel Ariel is sometimes portrayed as a female angel in many paintings and drawings around the world. Angel Ariel is said to be in charge of the upkeep of the Earth's elements, such as fire, water, wind, as well as the preservation and healing of all living things on the Earth. He is also responsible for punishing those that harm God's creatures, both the living and non-living things on the earth. You can call him a naturist. Ariel is also an angel who punishes demons as stated by the Jewish apocryphal book, The Wisdom of Solomon. A text The Hierarchy of the Blessed Angels, which was written in the 1600s, refers to Ariel as Earth's Great Lord. It describes Ariel's role in protecting the environment. Angel Ariel serves as a bridge between the worlds of humans and fairies, sprites, magical crystals, and other manifestations of magic in some folklore texts. Ariel is said to be a rebellious angel who is defeated by the Seraph Abdiel on the first day of the War of Heaven in Paradise Lost. A text from the Coptic Pistisophium, British Library states that, Jesus commanded the apostles to preach that they be rescued from the rivers of smoke of Ariel. Since Ariel is a name that is associated with Jerusalem, Jesus may most likely be referring to the fires of Gehenna, or simply Gehenna, which is a valley close to Jerusalem that has a bad reputation of ancient paganism. It was a place where the worship of the gods Baal and Moloch was practiced, a place where children were killed as human sacrifice. It was in later Jewish, Christian, and Islamic scriptures that Gehenna was referred to as the final resting place of the wicked and is frequently rendered as hell in English Bible translations. It was said that fires kept burning constantly in this valley to devour the garbage and corpses thrown into the valley. A German occultist, Cornelius Agrippa, who lived from 1486 to 1535, states that Ariel is the name of an angel, occasionally that of a demon, and also that of a city where idol worship is practiced. According to some texts, Ariel is an old name for the leontomorphic Gnostic Demiurge, who is called the Creator God. Historically, Ariel has a connection to the Demiurge, as he was frequently depicted in mysticism as a lion-headed deity with dominion over the earth. The name Ariel itself may have possibly been taken from Araman, 
the Zoroastrian counterpart of the Demiurge who is most likely the Mithraic god. Ariel is referred to be both the Earth's mighty lord and a prince. He is also referred to as the third archon of the winds, spirit of air, angel of the waters of the earth, and wielder of fire in a number of occult works. Ariel is frequently portrayed in mysticism, especially modern mysticism, as a ruling angel who rules the earth, the creative energies, the north, elemental spirits, and creatures. Thank you for your support.